Hello everyone and welcome to the Becoming Chartered in conversation with Captain Alan Yu, digital event hosted by CMI Southeast Regional Board. My name is Craig Greendale and I am the events coordinator at CMI and I will shortly be handing over to Gillian to begin today's event. If you have any questions during this digital event, you can ask them using the live chat box on the right of your screen and we will answer as many as we can during the Q&A. Today's session is being recorded and will be shared with you later today for those who have booked to attend. The event recording will also be available on the CMI website and the CMI YouTube channel. Now over to our host Gillian to begin today's event. Thank you, Craig, and hello everyone. Good evening. And welcome to the CMI Southeast Board's digital event, Becoming Chartered. So we look forward to receiving your questions in the live chat, as Craig has indicated. And thank you to those who have already submitted questions in advance. We'll, of course, do our best to respond to all of them as they come in. So CMI Chartered Status, as you know, it represents the pinnacle of management and the leadership profession. It is known as a gold standard benchmark for all of your achievements as a manager. And this evening, we are delighted to be in conversation with Captain Alan Newp, Royal Navy Captain, Chartered Manager and Fellow of the CMI. Hello, Alan, and welcome. Uh, good evening, uh, Gillian. Great, fantastic to have you with us here for this event. So, Alan, um, I'm going to do just a little bit of an introduction for you just for the audience. So since becoming chartered in uh, 2013, then becoming a fellow of the CMI, uh, Captain Alan Yope's career has simply gone from strength to strength. So currently, Alan is head of the Solent Maritime Enterprise Zone, and he has over 20 years of experience, obviously, with serving in the Royal Navy. He feels that his adept leadership approach and standing are actually a result of becoming a chartered manager. And of course, we're going to hear lots more about that. But I want to highlight Alan has some fantastic success recently with being shortlisted for Chartered Manager of the Year Award in 2022 and was awarded highly commended at the dazzling CMI President's Dinner hosted at the Natural History Museum just back in November. So Alan is again no stranger to CMI and you may have read the Knowledge and Insights interview um, that came out last autumn entitled Connect, Collaborate and Deliver. Um, we're keen to learn a lot more about Alan over and above what you may have read uh, online. Um, he is someone who's had an, an extensive professional career to date. So Alan, enough from me. Let's kick off now with you telling us all a little bit more about yourself. Over to you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Gillian. Um, uh, very kind for you to invite me uh, this evening. Um, what I think I'll do, um, I will look at my career through the, through the lens of a management and leadership journey. So back in the day, so early 90s, um, I started my leadership um, career. Uh, as a teacher. So very quickly, I progressed to be a second in department, uh, starting to learn about the basic of management, resources, schemes of work, controlling a, 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 a small team. But at the same time, I also joined the Royal Marine Reserves. And that's how I got into the, uh, the military. And I quickly progressed to become a what we call a section commander, which is a in charge of a six-man team. And that's where uh, I learned how to lead in complex environments, uh, develop resilience uh, within myself, but also within uh, my leadership style, being able to motivate uh, when when required in difficult circumstances, and also how to deliver uh, a mission or an aim uh, through utilizing resources. So that was my basic um, benchmarking in terms of my uh, leadership and management. Well, through that through that journey of being a teacher and a Royal Marine Reservist, I identified that in the Royal Navy, I could join as a training manager and then go and work with the Marines. So doing similar to what I was doing uh, as, a, as a teacher and observist, but a, a, a in the Royal Navy. So I took that option. So I joined Dartmouth, which is where we do the officer training um, in 1998. Um, and I became a, a training manager 
And through that year, nine months of, of basic training, we learned the basics of uh, leadership using John Adair's action-centered leadership uh, and Blanchard's situational leadership um, sort of theories to really develop that sort of theoretical and practical element. Um, and really through that period, it also emphasized uh, what it was like to be an ethical and inclusive leader, uh, which was also grounded in, in Royal Navy values, uh, which is referred to as C2 drill. Commitment, courage, discipline, respect for others, integrity and loyalty. Now, and, I, and as you can appreciate, they are values that we can we, we can recognize or should be able to recognize in many organizations. So that give me the basis of my sort of my leadership and my values ready to ready to move forward. So my career then quickly um, escalated. I ended up uh, in a Royal Marine unit very quickly and was able to do what I wanted to do. Um, providing learning development services to the Royal Marines um, deployed. So in the jungle, in the desert, in the Arctic, on board. And through that process, um, I, I continue to um, refine my leadership and management techniques. And the reason for that is when we joined the military, um, I'm particularly when I joined my training management branch, I was on a uh, professional program. So that's when I started to really go, how does professional development fit in with the workplace? How can I fit both in? How do they tie up together? So, so I developed uh, strategies uh, uh, on balancing the, the academic study with the practical. How do we find examples which will, which will help me write uh, my assignments and so on? So I went for that whole that journey and I had the opportunity to complete that uh, with a master's in training management and consultancy which was a quite, quite a new offering at the time in, in the early, early 2000s. Um, but being competitive and being an early adopter, um, I went for, went for that. Um, and I was one of the first to, to graduate in that area. But that then provided the catalyst for my lifelong learning sort of approach. And that become evident um, as, I, as I progress um, through this. I then moved on to... Um, uh, other roles, uh, which normally last uh, about, about two years. And I went to what's known as the Defence Diving School to training Army and Navy divers. Uh, very high risk, um, requ required a huge amount of uh, uh, management and, and leadership, even, even at my level as a lieutenant at the time. So, so I decided to say, OK, so how can I develop? So what I did, uh, I looked at where I wanted to get to, i.e. I'm a training manager, I'm a learning development specialist, so let me go or let's aim for CIPD accreditation. So how do I do that? So at the time, MVQs uh, were, were prevalent. Um, and what I liked about MVQs, and it's something to do, and it links also to CMI professional standards, because they provide a framework, an occupational standard, of which if you follow it, it's not about ticking boxes, but it gives you ideas on how to shape uh, your working practices to provide evidence so you can actually deliver uh, what is required by that sort of qualification. So I did two MVQs uh, consecutively. So I did a level five in operational management and I did a level five in learning development, both accredited by uh, CIPD. And by the end of that job, I was able to get a chartered manager, sorry, not chartered manager, chartered member of CIPD, um, which was in 2005. And then three, three years later, I was able to get fellow because I carried on with that sort of um, philosophy in, in what I was trying to achieve. So the key point really was aligning uh, frameworks, uh, occupational standards to my day-to-day -day work to improve what I was delivering in the workplace, but also to help me get my qualification and increase my, 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 my standards. And as I say, you know, there's benefits for all. Uh, to look at a framework, particularly in this case, the CMI professional standards, to look at what they need to achieve or what you need to achieve to, to, to get to chartered management status. So that, that's, a, that's a learning point uh, I'd like to share. I then went on to several jobs, uh, other jobs, um, commanding specialist teams around the UK, uh, conducting cross-government fish protection, which is very different, and then also um, going back to Dartmouth as a CMI. A training advisor. So during that six-year period, 
Uh, as I mentioned, I became a fellow of the CIPD. I also completed level five in CMI uh, management consultancy, which is based on a significant project I was running uh, at the time. And that was with the aim of becoming a chartered manager because I knew that if I had a level five CMI qualification, then I could undertake the fast track route uh, to get chartered manager. And at the time of my career, I needed that kudos uh, and, and that sort of, um, I didn't need it, but I, I wanted that kudos and I wanted to uh, stand out from the crowd because it's, it's super competitive uh, for promotion. So after that period, um, I then consolidated my leadership skills. I went to the Windsor Leadership Trust, uh, which is a charity uh, based at Windsor Castle uh, that delivers strategic uh, coaching programs. Um, and then I also embarked on an executive MBA at Cranfield. Um, so between those two uh, strands, it was really grounded me in terms of reflective practice. They use psychometric testing. Um, provide leadership scenarios, coaching at a, at a high level. So I started to learn uh, about myself um, a, a, as a leader and realized that self-awareness is an absolutely powerful tool. And we'll we can come on to that later because that is um, that's part of becoming an authentic uh, leader um, by knowing your strengths and areas for improvement. And then during, um, during that MBA period, I then utilized the opportunity um, to utilize those business skills and, be, and consolidate. Uh, and I developed the uh, defense awarding organization in 2014, uh, an awarding body to accredit niche uh, courses. Um, and through that, I was able to uh, develop my entrepreneurial skills uh, through real life problem solving. And the DIO or, or the defense awarding organization continues today, having saved uh, defense hundreds of thousands of pounds in accreditation costs. Um, and then that led me on to um, really my, my final, final two jobs, really. Uh, one was the head of learning development, uh, which is the pinnacle, really, of, um, of, of being a training manager, um, and also the head of the National Maritime Enterprise, um, which I'll come on to a bit more in a moment. So both of those jobs offered me the chance to consolidate my strategic leadership uh, and management skills basically startups. So the learning development organization was started from scratch, uh, developed the brand, developed the mantra, learn, develop, and inspire, um, and provide a new coherent approach to learning development across uh, a workforce of 30,000 uh, around the bazaars. I also led the uh, apprenticeship program, which uh, was recognized uh, for multiple awards. And we became the team, because it was all about the team uh, around this. Uh, we, the team became runners up for the CIPD HR team of the year. So, which was very pleasing. And then to round that off, we got offset outstanding uh, for our apprenticeship program. So by applying those leadership skills, that self-reflective approach, that ability to, um, uh, that resilience um, and ability to, to, to deal with strategic issues, uh, we, we achieved um, a, a significant result in that area. So finally, um, to the job I'm doing at the moment, been in the same job now for uh, over three years. The Solent Maritime Enterprise Zone, which you introduced, um, started in 2019, um, focused on skills, innovation, sustainability and social value around the maritime sector. Um, and then through the developing, through the adoption of a mantra, Connect, Collaborate, Deliver, uh, we gained significant success and now we've taken that national. And that national um, engagement is through developing partnerships led by the Royal Navy um, in partnership with industry, small and medium enterprises, government and academia tackling those maritime challenges, um, uh, as I mentioned. Significant cultural change um, across uh, communities, coastal communities. Uh, and that was what was recognized by the CMI, uh, as you alluded to. Uh, in the awards, which I was delighted to, 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 to attend. And I was also appointed adjutant professor uh, at the Southampton Marine and Maritime Institute at the University of Southampton in November 22 for those national uh, contributions uh, and, and the support to, to academia in those areas. So this is my last role in the, in the, in the Royal Navy after extensive um, uh, career. Uh, but I haven't finished yet. So as part of that resettlement process, 
I'm attending a CMI level eight strategic direction leadership course uh, to position uh, to position me for um, employment in, in the civilian market. So it's been a huge uh, journey. It's been a long, uh, fruitful management leadership uh, journey, uh, which I'm grateful for that chartered management um, support and focus to get me to where I am today. Well, that's a fantastic story that you've um, shared with us, Alan, and uh, certainly your commitment to um, the CMI um, has came through there loud and strong. So um, because this uh, session this evening is all really about becoming chartered, we're keen just to drill down a little bit more into why you decided to do the chartered manager process. And was there any particular trigger you know, within uh, your career at that time that, that you'd like to share with us? Yeah, so, so, so as mentioned, uh, you know, I've done a significant amount of um, uh, learning development. Um, I was familiar with CMI early in my career uh, through uh, coaching qualifications. Um, so I was keen to understand um, what it was all about because, of course, the CMI or the Chartered Management didn't really come into around about 2011, 2012, I guess. So it's quite, so it's quite much later than the um, Chartered CIPD. But the point was is that um, the for majority of um, leaders, uh, the need to be a chartered approach, and I say that because surrounded by engineers, which I am in, in, in my profession. They always talk about and go after chartered engineer. And at that time, I was thinking, well, what can I, what can I do that's different to the CIPD um, uh, route? And of course, the CMI um, came onto the radar. Um, I was speaking to the uh, CIPD um, accreditation manager uh, for, for, for defence, um, who, who suggested that I look at these opportunities. So so I did that. And I looked at the CMI level five, as mentioned before, because it related directly to what I was doing, management consultancy, really, in the project. Um, I, I sort of gripped that opportunity. And again, you know, my advice to anybody is if the opportunity um, comes up, I, I take it because it, it, it will it will serve you well. Um, moving forward. So I did that le level five management consultancy. I dealt with CMI and, and its uh, training provider in, in great detail. Um, and by becoming a qualified management consultant and give me the opportunity to become chartered, which would then give me the kudos and the, and the, the, the sort of uh, standing, if you like, amongst my peers and my profession, then I decided to take that because it then gives me the opportunity to prove, or well, I don't need to prove because it's already proven by being benchmarked against a national standard, then people uh, will know uh, what I'm capable of. Yeah, fantastic. Well, certainly very capable uh, with everything that you have indeed um, shared there, Alan, so thank you. So at this point, we're going to bring in the first question that we've received, it's from Carol. And Carol is keen to understand how long does it take to achieve uh, chartered status and what impact has it had on you as an individual? So talk us over your journey then to CMI, uh, to chartered manager once you'd kick that off and really the impact it's had on you, Alan. Yeah, so so once you understood um, that by having a level five qualification uh, was one of the pre prerequisites for where I was going, I was able to go after the fast track. So, and the fast track, and I doubt it's changed too much now, but, but, but in my recollection, uh, by the time I completed the application form, um, which was quite tricky and thought provoking, to be fair, um, and it, the, the assessment took um, no more than a couple of months uh, before I received notice uh, that I, I was awarded that, um, that chartered status, which I was absolutely delighted with. Now, of course, in terms of time, depends what route you're going down. So the fast track, clearly the, the, the upfront uh, effort is through the qualification. But again, of course, you can, you can do the, uh, the, the direct assessment uh, process. Uh, and again, um, the challenge there is being able to articulate uh, your journey 
and uh, and provide evidence uh, against the uh, professional standards. And that can t could take, uh, I guess, if you if you're well organised, uh, no no more than six months, I would guess, uh, unless Julian knows otherwise. Uh, but, it, but that seems reasonable uh, to me. In terms of impact, again, um, through depending which process you go through, um, I would say by consolidating your your experience, uh, being able to apply that into the workplace, uh, being able to talk uh, the language um, around that leadership and management activity, being driven towards um, uh, organizational performance, uh, you, you know, it has a natural impact and it does shape you, it shapes your thinking. Um, and it gives you that additional drive um, to, to, sh to show people um, your, your, your skills uh, and your capabilities. Um, and as it happens, by being a chartered manager, it links nicely to, to, to that professional standard, um, which, which is, you know, a perfect framework. Great. Yeah, thank you. And you, I'm noticing we're hearing this word framework, framework, and it is so important to have a framework, I think, to see your way through to something then to uh, be able to achieve. So I think that is a key takeaway from uh, the uh, discussion this evening. So, Alan, you've mentioned you had to do a reflective account as part of your application. So we know that Charter uh, CMI membership at any level requires maintenance of um, CPD log on, on an annual basis. But in particular, we know that with the um, Chartered Manager application, it is a very deep and rigorous reflection against your contribution against the Code of Conduct um, as um, yet another framework. So what did you learn about yourself in that process, Alan? Well, in terms of... I suppose the um, the key thing to note is, through my journey at least, I became a reflective pra practitioner. Uh, I became more self-aware of my leadership style, my my strengths and areas for improvement, uh, which is absolutely critical, um, of course. And I think, if anything, it's the most important. You know, where can you improve? And I, I don't think I've met any leader throughout my whole career that wouldn't benefit from uh, continued improvement. And I don't think I met many uh, who were arrogant to say that they didn't need further, further development, or they, they simply accepted the, the, you know, the, the, the areas for, 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 for development, of course. Um, so, so in terms of what I learned about myself, um, I had the added uh, benefit when I did the MBA and the Windsor Leadership Trust, as mentioned before, to be able to do those formal assessments, the psych psychometric testing, the coaching, the interviewing, to have a really deep understanding as to who I was um, as a as a leader, uh, as a manager, and you know, and and and, and as a, and as an individual. So I was able to 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 take those learnings um, and adapt them to, to to the workplace, and of course that also. Um, uh, is echoed in how you work with your teams. So, so through my learning and my self-awareness, I very much realised that I need to continue developing uh, the future leaders, um, and that has been, you know, a real focus of mine for, for 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 many years now through this process. Because, of course, you need to, to generate those, those those new leaders, give them opportunities, give them the responsibilities, um, and I think as part of this process. That's what uh, uh, one of the things I did learn is that you need to share your 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 learnings uh, with others in order to continue developing, but also to to, to further the um, the management leadership uh, profession. Great, thank you, Alan. So obviously, you did have a before and an after. Obviously, receiving chartered um, manager status. Uh, Clearly, even beforehand, you had fantastic achievements in your career. Uh, you've obviously gone on to excel and your career has taken probably a, a slightly different progression, still under the Royal Navy and um, wider umbrella. So you obviously work across a vast array of stakeholders. So I'm keen to learn a bit more from you around what was the ongoing impact really of chartered manager for you since getting it 
not only for you, but what about the team? What about the wider organisations that, that you've worked around? Yeah, I suppose. Um, I mean, one of the one of the best things about um, be, being chartered, of course, is perception. So, so when people see you are a chartered manager, chartered engineer, chartered CIPD, that the, the tends to be uh, an understanding that that is uh, a national benchmarked achievement. Um, because why is that important? It's important because it breaks through barriers. I, I believe anyway, in cases it won't, uh, but in the majority of cases, uh, it, tend not to be, it, it tends not to be um, a challenge to your credentials because um, people understand uh, that chartered um, is, is, is that uh, accumulation of, of skills and experience. And so the chartered management accolade um, is, is something that uh, I personally strive for. Uh, because I believed that, and still believe, that as a chartered um, manager, that um, I could justify and ex explain to others um, the, the nuances of leadership and management, particularly in complex areas, particularly strategic um, uh, situations. And it gave me the confidence to stand back uh, and be able to uh, have a conversation at the highest level. Um, confident that I knew what I was what I was talking about. Yeah, lovely. And that confidence um, is something that is really, really key, isn't it, to uh, to be able to achieve further. So we're going to draw on another question here, Alan, that has been submitted. Um, this question comes from Gemma. Gemma is obviously keen to know the impact of career. Uh, progression whenever you achieve chartered manager. So what would you say about how well you can use chartered manager status to boost your career prospects and achieve the best? Yeah, so so um, so it's a professional standard. It's um, it's a national benchmark uh, as we've already already established. What impact it has moving forward so it depends where you are in your career so if you're looking for a a, a new role for example then and certainly if i'm if i'm employing uh and somebody has a chartered uh, management uh or charter status then it automatically uh shifts my perception that they are proven um against an national standard um as, as a leader and a manager and the risk of employing that person is is is, is reduced um, the, by being a chartered manager also, uh, I would be confident, um, that that person was in that sort of continual development space. Um, he wanted to, um, improve, uh, the, the, the abilities and their understanding, um, and that, that was going to drive them, um, to, to excellence, uh, because I think that's important. So as a chartered manager, we should all be looking for excellence. And that means different things, to different people, of course, uh, at different levels and different contexts. And context is important. Uh, but certainly, uh, what one would be looking at um, uh, driving that, um, dri dri using that status to to boost your career po prospects, to get in front of your managers, to get new jobs on promotion, um, and to achieve the best out of that would be the continuing development process. The continual reading uh, uh, and gaining knowledge. For example, um, you know, I read, you know, Harvard Business Review because one, I enjoy it, it's business, and you know, I'm constantly talking about new theories and I'm interested in it. So that helps me develop. But there are magazines out there, the CMI or the CIPD or whatever, wh wh whatever you're interested in. But it's important to keep on reading and keep recirculating that knowledge and having a conversation with colleagues. Um, to really drive forward, one, the organization, but your team, um, so they can be the best that they can and that they're fully aware of, of current thinking so you don't get stale in the workplace. Yeah, fantastic. And certainly at the rate things are changing and moving forward at the moment, it's so it's so key to, key to keep yourself ahead of um, that knowledge piece. So you've obviously been through the process of Chartered Manager. 
what key message would you give to other managers that are considering to do it? Um, I would say absolutely look at it. But you need to know yourself. You need to know the team you're working with. And you certainly need to know your business. Uh, because that will provide you the context in terms of where you are uh, and whether you're ready for it or not. Um, the question of whether you're ready or not is it, it would be a personal choice. Um, what a great tool. And I used it the other day because I came across it again in terms of that self-diagnosis tool on the CMI. And I thought that was very, very useful. Although, of course, it's very subjective, of course. You know, you, 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 you always like to put yourself on the top. They're ex excellent at everything. But uh, but if you're honest with yourself, then it'll give you a really good benchmark as to where you, you are in terms of your journey as a leader and manager. And then it goes back, back to that point about your CPD, uh, how you're going to fill those gaps to get to the right standard so that you're ready for uh, your, your, your chartered management um, um, application um, as you go forward. But in terms of um, as leaders, what, what should you be looking at? Um, as mentioned, knowing yourself, knowing what CPD uh, you need, know, know your team, what needs they, they need, know your team because as a leader, you need to be able to um, deliver an organizational output, even though you may not have the skills. So you need to find team members who have the skills that complement your areas for development. So again, really utilizing that that team management um, uh, or, 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 or that team approach uh, to problem solving. Goes back to the early days and I like a dare, you know, team, you know, individual and task and so on. So so at the very basic level, that's what you should be should should, should be looking at uh, and be considering as you go through. Um, you need to be true to yourself, you need to be true to your values. I mentioned C2 drill uh, before. Uh, we've all got different values, but you need to be true to them. Uh, you need to be authentic. Um, you need to seek to continually improve um, where you're going, what you want to be. Uh, you need to embrace diverse thinking. So be inclusive, um, uh, very much a, 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 as a leader. Uh, and that's inclusive of other, other leaders. Um, be tolerant uh, of areas um, that you may um, you may not necessarily uh, or the, the behaviours uh, in terms of leadership elements that you may not necessarily do yourself. And we'll talk about that uh, more uh, in a moment, I guess. Um, so going after a chartered manager um, as a credible professional benchmark um, is, is an absolute um, journey to go on. Uh, but you need to plan it. You need to understand how you're going to achieve it how it fits into your lifestyle as you go on that journey. Because it will just take a lot of work. Uh, it just take time. Um, but if you want it, then, then go for it. Fantastic. Thank you. So we've got another question here, Alan. Uh, this time it's from Dylan. Uh, Dylan asks, Captain Alan, are there any leaders that have inspired you? Hmm. Uh, yeah, interesting. So um, obviously for many years, I, I, I mentioned all of the qualifications and um, theoretical studies that I've done. So there's numerous uh, are potentially uh, inspirational leaders. But but nowadays, if, I, if I'm truly honest, I look around me to look for inspiration. Um, so, so I'm now grounded in the real world, in, in what I see before me. And as I mentioned before, um, you know, you may see some leaders that you don't necessarily agree with. Toxic leaders, you, you, you may physically class them as. Um, and you see some exceptional leaders that, that manage to achieve everything you, you dream of. But it's all about on, trying to understand what they're doing and what that quality is that, that you can ever emulate or absolutely reject in terms of how you, how, how, how you, how you do your business. So, so when you talk about who's inspirational, it's, it's looking for those qualities in people around you, whether that be mentors, line managers, um, coaches, young adults. And, you know, I might say, and, you know, uh, my, my daughter, for example, you know, I was inspired by her when she went for um, head girl. You know, the, the dedication, the ability to, you know, 
without any of this academic input, was able to naturally show uh, her, her leadership through her ability to, to, to plan, to argue, to interview, to present, um, and then deliver um, throughout the whole year in, in, in a significantly large, large school. So, you know, there, there are leaders at every level. So although it doesn't really answer your question, uh, Dylan, I think, you know, looking around you at other leaders is absolutely where we need to be. Because the theoretical element of, you know, an analysis of great leaders um, is plentiful. But I think in the reality, uh, it's a question of what the world in which you live uh, and, and what you believe to be um, good and bad is, 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 what, is, is what I would say. And that's what I do, to be honest. Yeah, no, that's uh, a very um, humble account you've shared there with us, Alan. And I particularly like the story about your young daughter and her leadership journey to head girl. So I think we've maybe got an aspiring chartered manager of the future there. Yeah. So um, yeah. we need to uh, keep her on files with uh, <laughs> CMI, really, um, for that. So, um there was something that you mentioned within there, Alan. Um, you, you know, you were citing mentors, line managers, uh, and coaches. And um, I know something about you that you haven't shared with us as part of that journey that I think the audience um, could benefit from hearing from. So we know that you have completed triathlons in your day, and we know that you have competed in Iron Man. So I'm just going to throw this one back at you, Alan. Um, what has that experience done for you and how has leadership inspired you on that journey? Just something a bit more general here to uh, throw into the discussion. Yeah, uh, wasn't expecting that question to be fair. Um, yeah, so uh, <laughs> so when you talk about inspiring, so, so I didn't start triathlons till I was much later. I, you know, ran all my life, um, but I hadn't really done uh, triathlons. Uh, not not particularly confident swimmer when I first began. Um, so so again, it's not necessarily about the leadership; it's about the management, particularly the time management. Because anybody on the call who has done a triathlon or training for a sport, we realise how difficult it is. So with triathlon, with three sports, trying to fit that into a busy job is quite exceptional, which means very early starts, very late finishes. Um, so, so again, the time management aspect is, is on a new level um, uh, for, for sure. And trying to manage that both physical, mental uh, and work-life balance is, 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 is certainly um, a, a, a challenge. But again, it goes back to the resilience piece. Um, you know, anybody who, who competes in endurance events, you know, has that mental strength and that resilience. I'm sure many in the audience don't realize that they will they, they possess it as much as they do. Um, but, you know, I took a stab. So I thought, well, you know, I'll do I'll do um, a half Ironman uh, followed by a, a full Ironman, you know. So. Um, so, you know, in terms of distance, you know, it's it's um, over three kilometers um, uh, for, for swim. It's 112 miles for bike followed by a marathon. Uh, for those who don't know um, in the audience. So, so again, it's that mental strength in terms of compartmentalizing uh, what, what, what you do, being organized, um, be prepared. So lots of good practice from work. Where's your resources? You know, what, what's your bike like? You know, where's, where's your kit? You know, what, you know, what, how, how does that all, all, all fit together? Where's your, where's your team? You know, you've got to be supported by your family and your friends um, to, to get to get through all of this. So, again, it's just bringing those business um, um, skills into um, into that sort of hobby um, space, if you like. So so I'm not sure that answers the question, but um, but certainly it's a, it's a management challenge more than a, a leadership challenge, I'd probably say. <laughs> Thank you for that, Alan, and you've answered it beautifully. And of course, citing some really key things about your own personal capability and challenges that you have addressed to um, to be able to see yourself over the line and obviously um, take that winning attitude and focus to achieve what you want to achieve, which of course is what you do need everyone to be able to achieve chartered manager, albeit 
uh, you won't be getting wet and uh, exhausted physically with what Alan has, um, of course, described. Um, but it gives us a segue into just focus on something on a bit more of a wider level, Alan. So everyone currently is impacted by the weather challenges that exist across the economy. Uh, we know organisations struggling with the ability to attract and retain talent. We know that's uh, at the forefront of a lot of leaders' minds. Um, but more broadly, what do you see now, the role and the importance of professional leadership and management qualifications now, given the real challenges that are out there across organisations today? Yeah, I think um, absolutely essential still, but I think curriculums um, need to be updated and, and, and forward thinking. Um, I don't know if you've seen it, but on the website, uh, on the CMI website, there's a management point, management 4.0 uh, paper, uh, which sets out the case for change uh, and how we need to prefer, be, prepare our leaders and our managers uh, with the right skills, uh, knowledge and attitudes and attributes to navigate the onset of, of technology, for example, the AI automation, Internet of Things uh, in the workplace. And of course, that uh, will impact on the workforce. So how do we lead and manage our, our, our teams um, through that? And also the, the new hybrid uh, ways, ways of working. Now, of course, you could be left to your own devices to try and work that out. Um, but wouldn't it be nice if the qualifications and the knowledge provided by uh, the universities and the training providers really wrap that up uh, as, as, a, as a core core um, topic um, for every industry. Um, because of course, you know, managed leaders are in every single industry um, that, 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 that we have, and we shouldn't lose track of that. This is not a specialist sport. This is, you know, the economy requires strong leaders and managers uh, with the right skills. And therefore, it's incumbent on us all to make sure we've got the right skills to, 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 to support business uh, and support the economy um, as, as we go as we go forward. Um, but yeah, so we've got to adapt to the society changing, uh, technology disrupting the norms, um, you know, and the pandemic, pandemic has changed our business thinking. But without that sort of guidance um, from the, the, the academics and the papers and the articles that are written, then how do we carry on developing and, and, and adapt uh, to, to, to those challenges? And that's why I say, you know, read, you know, Harvard Business Review, CMI, CPD, CIPD uh, magazines to make sure you're current with all these issues. And it'll give you an insight as to what you do need to do to adapt um, to these challenges. Lovely, Alan. So I'm going to ask you now to evidence what Chartered Manager has done then for you to tackle this within your everyday work. Um, I believe um, I'm, I'm equipped uh, for the change. I've got an uh, agile mindset. Um, I've got a, I develop an agile team, high performing team, because I've read, I've learned, I've experienced um, the variety of of techniques, uh, models, you know, and gain that experience in those complex environments. So, and you know, by reflecting on the, the chartered manager um, framework or professional standards, etc., which I've done very recently uh, as I was pre preparing for this conversation, it dawned on me that. Um, We all need to be equipped, fast thinking, innovative, um, and be able to tack tackle these challenges uh, as, as we drive forward. Because without without it, then we as individuals won't be able to deliver um, for our organizations, for our teams, or even for ourselves. So for me, being chartered has provided me with that sort of real strong um, benchmark which I can always go back to um, when needed uh, so I can refocus uh, on the challenges ahead. 
Lovely. That's thank you, Al. And that's that's great. Thank thank you, Alan. And certainly the challenges ahead. We know that there will be many, and we have got uh, quite a few comments that have um, came in during when uh, we have been uh, chatting, Alan. And uh, I am going to go through them here. We have got uh, ten minutes left for us to uh, have a have a chance to really just go um, through them and respond. Um, so what have we got here? Um, so we have got uh, Michael Kamara saying, Alan, can you share what were your what what were your stormy era to becoming chartered? How were you able to surmount the storm? So someone's obviously drawn on your Royal Navy um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, background there. So yeah. So, so I presume that's uh, referring to um, the challenges of the journey. Um, I think the challenges really was finding or being able, finding the energy to continue with the with the with the amount of um, not only um, high tempo work uh, environment, but also the energy to study for hours on end, trying to balance um um life with with that study uh with that development um was one aspect so so the, the time was one of, one of one of the keys but also it's the how do you gain the evidence in the workplace if you're not doing a job that's going to provide you with that evidence um so in terms of resources for example if you have to prove you you run budgets and so on and so forth, then that is a difficult ask when you don't have a budget to run, for example. So again, that delays some of the process. But to work around it, of course, you just use initiative. So so, so you go out of your way to try and find how to get involved uh, with those type of aspects. Uh, because by doing that, of course, one, you're showing initiative, but two, uh, you are developing by asking the questions you wouldn't normally ask to get the information that you need to progress towards that professional standard uh, or that benchmark. Hope that answers your question. Yeah, super. Thank you, Alan. Um, we've just um, got some questions here really about uh, uh, um, positioning individuals to go for chartered managers. So we've got Nada mm. Jared. Uh, I'm a university first year studies in business management. Can I be a chartered manager at this stage? So Nada, um, I'll respond to you on that. You, uh, if you're on a dual accredited um, business management degree program that is dual accredited with uh, level five leadership and management diploma from the CMI, quite a lot of them are out there across the university space. When you graduate, you uh, when you graduate with your CMI diploma, you automatically get foundation um, chartered manager status. So foundation chartered manager recognizes that you've got the level five diploma and puts you on the journey then to chartered manager. In order to be ripe to actually go through the application process that we've discussed tonight, and Alan has given examples of this highly reflective process, you need to be in the position where you can evidence um, capability against all aspects of the standards of chartered manager um, aligned to the code of conduct. So you will have to give actual examples of what you do within your work practice that evidences that you are um, contributing at that level. So we don't normally see individuals going straight from foundation chartered manager directly to chartered manager because we recognize that chartered manager is experiential. You do have to demonstrate what you are doing um, in your work role um, against that. We've also got um, another question related to applying from Aaron Neal. Aaron holds an M CMI status, uh, CMI level seven diploma in strategic management and leadership, also IOD four and five. He intends to apply for chartered manager accreditation using the fast track process. Fantastic. Is it then possible to upgrade to fellow? So yes, it is. It doesn't come automatically, Aaron. Um, the, out there, there are lots of chartered managers who are members of the CMI. In order to become a chartered fellow, 
of the CMI, you will need to then still submit an application to be recognized at fellowship level, which again is a much higher level than um, standard membership level. Okay, so there will be more information available on the website that um, Craig can maybe copy and paste directly into the chat here to give you that answer. But um, fellowship isn't automatically granted on getting chartered manager. So I hope that answers that question for you. Um, Alan, before we sign off here, I've got another one for you from um, Michael Kamara again. Um, Captain Alan, how can you determine a successful leader? Hmm. Interesting. Um, well, the the depends on it. So um, the obvious answer would be, you know, can things be delivered? But I would like to think things will get delivered, but it's how we get things delivered that makes us a successful leader. How do people interact with one another? How do they go about uh, the business? What behaviours? Uh, are, 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 they, are they showing as they move forward? And how are they treating teams and the team uh, of which they, you know, they're expecting to, to deliver this output? So success is on many levels, but I, I think if you go down to the basics, it's very much about um, how you achieve the end state whilst bringing your team with you. Because of course, by providing that leadership, that vision, that direction, um, unlocking uh, challenges, removing, re removing the roadblocks, if you like. Um, that's your job as a leader to enable your team to fr to, to, to thrive uh, and to and to deliver the outputs on your behalf. Because of course, uh, their success is your success, and your success is their success. So again, you, you can't separate yourself as a leader from your from your team. So. I hope that answers your question, but ultimately it is about your team and it's about making sure you provide the right direction, vision, unlocking challenges so that they can do what they need to do and making sure, of course, you develop your team to, um, to be able to deliver that, that, that output as well as yourself. Lovely. Thank you. Uh, one final question here. Um, it's coming in from Gina. Um, Gina has uh, finished an executive MBA. Well done, Gina. Yeah, um Gina's wondering, how do you see and address talent management in any organization? Hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a real challenge. Uh, and certainly the Royal Navy has been reviewing its uh, talent management process uh, over the past uh, two years. Uh, it, 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 is, it is a complex um, process. But I guess, um, again, it goes down to you as a leader um sponsoring or mentoring and coaching your team members um and for you to see the spark uh w within them to see you know, and determine that their talent because of course you'll have your hr processes which is a, a different conversation um but i think for you on the ground uh i think it is our responsibility as leaders to 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 you know to identify the the next next level of talent and we do that by knowing our people we do that by providing them C cpd opportunities uh we do it by giving them tasks that will stretch them uh, to prove their um, their abilities um so so i think uh, there's a lot of self-help uh within that but again in terms of uh, and that can happen in any organization but of course every organization will have its own policies uh and what they value to be um uh, skills knowledge attributes that they want uh, within their senior um leadership and of course if if an individual is not being recognized within their organization the best thing to do is take it elsewhere because other people but other people will be looking for the skills you've got so don't so i wouldn't stay put in an organization that doesn't recognize your talents uh, for sure so again a bit of self-help for you as an individual but also you as a leader to um to encourage uh, your people to move and even move out the organization and maybe then come back into the organization once they've gained sufficient experience to be promoted. So that's the way I would see it in a practical perspective. Lovely. Thank you, Alan. So um, just to summarize then, everyone, uh, there are various routes to chartered manager um, and uh, from 
uh, from, from that position, you can obviously build a personal development plan to build yourself up to um, full status. And as I mentioned earlier, you can have foundation chartered status and work yourself up to full status through a robust application against your achievements and then through the uh, reflective discussion with an assessor. Um, links will be provided that will take you directly through um, to those pages um, to help you on that journey. And we do indeed wish you all very, very well. Um, sadly, that's all we have time for, folks. Um, thank you all for your questions, uh, making this a highly engaging event. And of course, a big thanks to you, Alan, uh, for giving us your time uh, to inspire and support the next generation of chartered managers. So thank you. Thank you very much. And I hope, in, I hope that I've given you some nuggets to think about. Um, and thank you, Julian, and to CMI for, for having me. Wonderful. So uh, we'll hand back now to Craig. Um, thank you again, everyone. And he will uh, close off the event. Thank you. Thank you, Gillian. So yes, that's it for today's session. Thank you to everyone who joined us. And thank you to our host, Gillian. And of course, Captain Allen for your insights and of course, sharing your journey with us. So don't forget, if you're a member of CMI, you can log into Management Direct using the link in the live chat, and you can find a wide range of exclusive and practical development resources and much more. And if you're not yet a member or subscriber, you can join our community via the link that's also in the live chat to gain full access to our Management Direct portal. You can also sign up to the free CMI newsletter for the latest trends and tips for managers and leaders. Please also take a few moments to let us know your thoughts on today's event by completing the evaluation form. The link is in the live chat. Thank you again for joining us and have a great evening.